Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Cause you make me feel alive. I've been locked out of heaven. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. At UBNRadio.com. Welcome back. This is your pilot, Larry, taking control of the flight today. We're on a long journey, and as we get above sea level, above, above a few thousand feet, you're going to feel a little bump in this there. But if the, any, if the uh, oxygen get a little bit thin, you'll see the mask going to drop down and put the mask on yourself first before you help anybody else. Uh, because it might be a little bumpy, but it's going to be a pretty good flight. And we're going to enjoy it. We're going to kind of look down upon a few things, look up at a few things, look forward at a few things, and then we're going to look back. And, and then I hope at the end of this journey that you say, Larry, Pilot Yakes, this was a good flight. Now, one of the reasons I started out by saying that, uh, you guys hit me up pretty hard. I, you know, I put this filler out there and asked people to want me to do a show on how do we get here. And uh, I was asked not to reveal the person's name, so I won't do that. Let's just call him Bob for now. Uh, wanted me to do a show on uh, I'm in Getting and how do we get here. And as I started to show out as a pilot and, and the flight, when we are talking about religion and spirituality and ancient philosophy and stuff, that's basically what it was. It's all about metaphors, allegories, and parables. And so, but when you ask the question, how do we get here with this Armageddon thing and with the recent move of um, Israel moving its capital and, and the United States moving its, um, uh, moving its place, what do you call it, place, um, embassy to uh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And so... And then you look at a lot of the Christians, and I think that's why the question came up, is this a sign of Armageddon? And, and what is Armageddon? And, and, and why do Christians so believe in Armageddon? And according to, and, and, and I'm not going to do a bouncing around the Bible and all of that. A lot of the stuff I'm going to say, I'm just going to give you the trigger names and the writers. And, and you're going to have to do a little research and look at it for yourself. Now, for those of you that are used to me doing this, how do we get here? And, and, you know, I have to touch on people's spiritual, and especially in this case, uh, Christian beliefs. And some of it's not going to sit well with a lot of you. And for those that are used to me doing this, so be patient with me when I walk up to the door with this conversation and I tell those that is new to listening to me, uh, consider me attacking Christianity, and I'm not attacking it. I'm just going where the research uh, take me. And so one of the things that we're going to be doing here is looking at the historical writings and where these stories came from and how they were misinterpreted and how do we get here that those of you Christians that believe in Armageddon are praying so that your God can come because these are the last days. And I mean, and it, and it breaks my heart because some of you really, really, really believe that the armies of the world should be gathering in the Middle East. Actually, Northern Africa, Middle East, for the sake of the conversation, I say Middle East, okay. Israel, the move that Israel just made and the Palestinians in America get involved and all of the churches are saying now this is a sign of the end times. And, and they're praying, and you Christians are praying that these armies get together and just blow each other up. I mean, men, women, and children and babies by the millions, you're praying that they get bombed by different 
armies and nuclear weapons and weapons of mass destruction, some of the worst uh, weapons that has ever been made, you want them to be unleashed on people, human beings. The very God you're talking about, you want these people to be tortured and burned and suffer so that he can come back. And they are his children. And many of you go to church and preach this and listen to this. You listen to your preachers telling you that you better be prepared because that day is coming. The Armageddon is coming in the book of Revelation. And so when we go through this, I'm going to explain to you uh, that the book of Revelation is about consciousness. And I know a lot of you are going to be a little bit surprised in that. And when we go through and break this down, uh, you're going to see. And, be, and, and once again, uh, this is your pilot, uh, your brother Yakes. Don't believe nothing I say. I want you to go and do your own research. Uh, some of you have been very, very wonderful with me, and have been, I've been uh, invited to do lectures and uh, talks on these subjects and these topics, and I, and I will be doing that. And for those of you that uh, see uh, value in what I'm doing, you know, hit me up on my email, Larry Yakes, as is, on AOL.com. That's L A. R R O Y Y A T E S A S I S at AOL dot com. Hit me up or just check me out on Facebook and I would be glad to cover some topics and be able to come and speak at your events. And but back into what I was saying is that I I look at I I look at I watch some of the old teachings of guys like Oral Roberts. I listen to guys like Billy Graham. I listen to many of these ministers. I've listened to guys from T.D. Jakes and all these ministers talk about Armageddon and the last days. And I, I just, it just breaks my heart that you we're being so misled into thinking that in order for your God to come back, now some guy going to come out of the clouds on a white horse. Now look here, wait, whoa, whoa. Now, no, 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 I'm not picking at you, but you got to think here. Now, here's a guy going to come out of the clouds on a white horse. Where is he going to land? I mean, what airport? I mean, you can, I can just, you got to, oh, okay. <clears throat> uh, this is a uh, traffic jammer in Tennessee, uh, 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 flight 666. You're going to have to hold off because we got a white man coming in on a, pss, pss, a, a horse. Pss, pss. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, he got blood. On his sword, you believe that? I mean that stuff. I mean, where is he gonna? What landing strip are you gonna look at? Now you got to stop all the flights from going. Well, psst, no JFK. What did, did you hear anything? Well, Bob, uh, we, psst, 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 I see a horse too. I don't know where where he changed his flight. He changed the flight pattern. Where is he gonna land? And you believe in he's gonna come out of the sky with a white horse? I mean, <laughs> job is over. There. I you know. Honestly, folks, I'm not trying to make fun of you, but you got to think here. You got somebody going to tie up all the air traffic because he's coming in on a white horse. And you believe this now. I mean, his hair ain't going to get singed, burning, and, and you know, the hell, it's, it's, I, you believe this. You know, and, and how is he going to be white and he come through that belt of this this? And, and all this fire just to get into the earth atmosphere. If he were, if it was white when he started out, he most definitely wouldn't be white when he landed coming through that. But it, but, but but I'm just trying to get you to see what you have been taught to believe in, and and then the the bombing and the and the killing and the slaughter and the torture of many millions of people so that your savior can come to town. I mean, he ain't going to call you and let you know. And then you all say, well, we don't know when he's going to come. You got to be ready at all times. How are you going to move this much military and nobody's going to know? I mean, folks, look, I, I, what, 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 what saddens me <laughs> is that you believe it. 
and 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 and, and when I when we get into this Armageddon thing, and about what nation, and then all the preachers that's coming together collecting the tithe, you giving a tenth of all to that church for him to come and tell you all of this madness. And yes, I got to be the one, and I'm gonna step up to the plate. It's madness. It's madness when you can wish and pray. And some of you get a little slick. You know, you Jesus, some of them want to say, where's well, Jesus? Some want to say, Yahshua is Messiah. And then some of you want to say, well, I don't really want Armageddon to happen, but I want the Messiah to come. You can't have it both ways in your belief. Because according to the book of Revelation uh, and your belief in Christianity and the way it's being taught, that this must happen. The Israel must be destroyed. The Palestine must be destroyed. The armies from around the world. And you're talking about your biggest armies. American, United American military, Russia's military, China's military. Uh, every time these countries make a move, the first thing you holler, oh, 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 my goodness. There's going to be a white horse coming out of the sky soon. I'm getting And then some of you crossing your fingers and saying, oh, my God, let it happen because our Savior is coming. Now, in, in addressing this, I want to help those that is new to me um, touching these subjects. In your Bible, Paul said, and you got to go find it for yourself. Paul said these things of Abraham and Sarah is an allegory. Now, I didn't write that. I want you to go back again. I'm going to re re repeat this again. These things of Abraham and Sarah is an allegory. This is what Paul said. Jesus said he spoke, that he himself spoke in parables and metaphors. He never spoke plain, plainly. And so you go and look up these things for yourself and find out where, the, where, these, where these statements was made. And many of you know. But then Jesus turned right around and said, well, the kingdom of God is in you. And I in you, you are in me. And this is what uh, Jesus said, and this is all in the Bible, so don't take my word for any of this. And then you ask yourself, well, what is an allegory? Allegories are basically a made-up story with a hidden spiritual message within it. So when Revelation and the book of Revelation was saying fire is going to rain down from heaven, so you are pitching tanks, shooting missiles in the air and coming down and bombing people. You are being taught that airplanes are going to fly over a particular area, uh, Israel, the Middle East down there, and dropping all these nuclear bombs and stuff. Ships, warships off the coast firing nuclear weapons over there. Now you got North Korea. You think North Korea is a part of one of the missing links to this Armageddon. And it is really, really shocking, shockingly sad when we really sit down and we understand and just give some thought to it. And like I said, um, what I'm going to touch upon today, don't take my word for it. I want you to go in and do some research for yourself. And then just maybe, maybe, you won't pray to God that he come and blow up a bunch of people that never did anything to you. They had a different belief system. The Jews have a different spiritual belief. They feel that they're right. The Muslims have a different spiritual belief. They believe that they're right. The uh, You Christians have a special, a special uh, spiritual belief. You believe you're right. But they all come from Abraham. But Paul said Abraham was an allegory. And look, you got to wrap your mind around that one. Don't come back and say, oh, Larry snuck in your house in the middle of the night and wrote that in your Bible, because I didn't do it. It was already there. But then if this is in the Bible, and it is, and now that we know that they are allegories, well, what does these allegories mean? What does the parable mean? And so... Those of you, before I get into this, and a lot of you are saying, Larry, just get to it, just get to it. I want you 
to be a little patient with me because this is not intending to hurt anybody. If you want to walk away and believe that somebody's going to come out of the sky on a white horse to save you, then you have that right. Um, if you want to believe that you're going to go and bomb yourself and get 72 virgins, uh, and that's what you believe, and that's what you want to do, I can't stop you. I cannot, I'm not trying to change anyone's religion, but I'm going to, and I'm trying, not trying to tell anybody how to think, and I don't want you to follow me. All I want to do is to encourage you and stimulate thought-provoking ideas and, 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 and be thought-provoking to the point that you will go and do some research on your, on your own. And these stories came out of ancient Kemet. And many of these stories are still written on the walls and temples tens of thousands of years long before there were Gutenberg printing press that was used to print up the Bible under this Constantine and King James. These stories are written on the temple walls and carved in stone. So you don't have to take my word for it. Go to Egypt and see for yourself, and then go to some of the libraries and look it up, and just go online and look it up. Get some old dictionaries. Get some old encyclopedias. And then combine the information you get from that. Go to some of the libraries and get some of the older books. Then start to Google stuff, and you'll start to put the truth together, you find the information. Because we have no excuse to believe in such foolishness because we're living in an information age. And we have no excuse to sit back and want to see other human beings destroyed because we're living in the belief of an allegory and taking it literal, literally. And that is what we're going to touch on today. And, you know, like I said, you, you know, and, and the hell is going to, fire is going to be raining from hell and all of that in the book of Revelation. And if I'm not mistaken, you guys correct me. I think book of Revelation is the only place that really talked about Armageddon. But I want to show you where the book of Revelation is about consciousness. It is about your mind, your body, your spirit and your soul, and how they interact with each other. You see, when you have a disturbance in the kingdom of God, which is your body, Jesus said he lived that the kingdom of God is within you. So within your consciousness and within your body, your nervous system is like the universe. When they stretch out your nervous system and it, 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 with all, all the neuron transmitters, it actually looked like stars. And your whole system, everything within your body, bows down to your nervous system. And your nervous system works as the messenger as you look in physically and mentally look into the heavens and pray to the stars and pray to the sun and pray to that, where well, the kingdom of God within you, everything within you bow down to your nervous system. And your nervous system is stimulated by different outside stimulants. It could be smell. It could be thought. It could be running into someone that, you, that looked like someone you know. It could be a taste. Uh, many things can can stimulate your nervous system, and your nervous system is going to send a signal to your hypothalamus gland. And your hypothalamus gland will send a signal uh, from that to your pituitary gland. And in your pituitary gland, it will send out this, this hormone called corticophylline. Corticophylline is what? A stress hormone. Now we are seeing what Armageddon is about. And stress is a, a cumulative thing. It accumulates in the body. And it does, and the, the things that happened to you when you were a child, when uh, whether you were abused as a kid, 
uh, and and whether you had um, death of a mother or sibling or parent of any male or female, a parent or someone very close to you, that shock is buried within you and it accumulates. And then stress, building upon stress, the nervous system is continued to send this message. And what happens is, is the... Um, the uh, pituitary gland now with the uh, CRH uh, hormone sends a signal to the uh, adrenaline gland. And the adrenaline gland is now producing that which is called cortisol. Now, this is very interesting. When the ancients was talking about that within the kingdom of God, your body, and the, the, the head, and when he said from heaven, the t because they looked at the highest point of your body, which is your head, and then the, 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 the fire that is raining down from that in ancient antiquity, whenever they used the word fire, and when they used the word earth, and heaven, they were talking about a different level of consciousness, and fire represent emotions. So your emotion is on high alert now, sending uh, your nervous system, sending this, the, these, the, these messages through your uh, hypothalamus gland to your pituitary gland to your adrenal gland, and it's producing cortisol. Now, why is this important? Because Jesus said, that the kingdom of God is in you. And, and so if there's Armageddon, then Armageddon is where? Well, see, that's where we're headed. And, and, and once the adrenaline gland starts to flood the body with cortisol, then cortisol becomes toxic. Cortisol becomes toxic because cortisol really uh, breaks down into protein. And the protein breaks down into amino acids. And the amino acids feeds, and the protein feeds every cell in your body from a molecular level. And each cell has the same makeup as a city. It has a water system. It has a disposal system. It has an energy plant. It has all of the things you need because each cell targets different um, parts of your body, organs, your heart cell, your lung cell, your kidney cell. Uh, but when cortisone is flooding the body because of the adrenaline gland is so fired up because you are under stress, your body stopped producing the, the proper balance of en enzymes in your stomach that you can no longer break down the food that you eat. And you're walking around for 40, 50, 60 years with your stomach like this, a tight fist. And you're smiling, you have a family, you have money, you have cars, but all of that is causing even more stress that is accumulating. Because of the proteins and the amino acid, amino acid create many different uh, hormones, which we won't get into all of that. Then it starts to deprive the cells of its nutrition because the body is in what you call a constant state of fight or flight. And then the body is saying, and the adrenal gland is saying, well, we don't give a damn about nothing else in the body. All we are doing is that the nervous system is keep sending a message saying that we are under attack emotionally, spiritually. And then the fire from heaven, your emotion, is now unleashing the bombs inside of you. And they start to go off. Well, when the ancients talked about your liver and your heart, each one was considered a nation. Your heart is a nation within the nation of your body. Your lung is a nation within the nations of your body. 
Your kidneys is a nation within the nation of your body. And within each one of those nations, you have cells that are nations themselves. And oftentimes when the ancient talked about the nation within a nation, talking about your organs, and even down to the molecular level and all the way down to talking about the cells in your body, they often called them cities. They often called it a city on the hill, the shiny city on the hill, on the hill talking about your brain. And so when all of this starts to happen with the flooding of cortisone, now each nation is fighting against itself. The heart is destroying the body, abandoning it, because now Armageddon has set in. You are now living in a state of perpetual anxiety because Armageddon has set in. It has nothing to do with no airplanes bombing nobody. It has nothing to do with these uh, uh, United States and all of these people going to bomb uh, the world. It has nothing to do with that. Armageddon, when the book of Revelation is talking about consciousness, it is talking about the nightmare and the hell that you and I are going through when we are under tremendous amount of stress. I, as a black man, am under stress and have gone through my own Armageddon. And now that I understand what Armageddon means, I am battling with myself to calm Armageddon down so that my body won't destroy itself. And this is why when in women, uh, in men, producing the hormones, the male hormones and the female hormone uh, causes estrogen to dry up because too much cortisol. And when estrogen is not proper, properly balanced inside females, you can get everything from breast cancer, ovarian cancer, Armageddon has set in. You're at war inside. You're, the nation of God is at war. And within men, this is why the sex drive is down, the reproduction of uh, giving birth to health children because you're stressed out. Your Armageddon is in your mind and how you are reacting to the pain and suffering that we all have gone through. And, and, and the trick here is that the nervous system does not take a message back. Once the nervous system get a message, because once the protein is broken down to the amino acids and then turned into neurotransmitters, it can't take that message back. And what happens is, and the glands and the pituitary gland is going to con continue to persist, persist to, to constantly participate in this cycle of fight or flight. And this is why the, the, the pancreas now is taking the amino acids and stuff and turn that into energy, which is not supposed to turn it into energy. And this is now when you get glucose, high sugar, and you got diabetes. The body is at war with itself. And we are all suffering through different levels of Armageddon inside of who we are and how we have handled this devil. And that's the, the, the Satan that they are talking about, the, uh, the, 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 the battle between good and evil. Yes, it's a battle between good and evil because too much cortisone is evil. Too much stress is evil because it's ripping us apart where we cannot, we are not functioning in a healthy manner, in a balanced way. We can't get along with our children. Everybody's snapping at each other. You, you can't get along with your relationships. No one can hear each other. And then we start to go into different parts of the body start to react differently because when you are living from your lower level of consciousness that is controlled by the gonads and men and the ovaries and women, 
where you have testosterone uh, in men, whether it is too high or too low. And it all affects us in our core. And this is why you say I have this gut feeling. Something is not right. I have a gut feeling. I'm not feeling good. I'm, I'm sensing something is wrong with me because it's all happening in the gut. And, that, and, and then your neck and your heart. And, but just go with that gut feeling because you're, you're now functioning from a lower level of consciousness. And the same thing with female in estrogen. You start to produce less enzyme inside your body. And, and I tell you something else. I think it's called uh, cattle, catabolic, catabolic. Cortisone turns into what a catabolic hormone. And this is interesting. Catabolic hormone is when it start, you, start, you start to de deteriorate. Your muscles start to go to waste. Your bones starts to go to waste. And that's where the word cannibal come from. We, our body, because of the amount of stress that we are under and the fire that is raining from heaven, which is our mind, our emotions is out of control. And we've gotten to the point that we are so out of control with our emotion that we don't even want to fix it. We don't want to change it. And we get upset when we tell, when someone say to us, you need to look at it a different way. You need to figure out another way to handle this stress or it's going to kill you. And this is why all the doctors say uh, stress is a silent killer. When you are under stress at this point, this is also causes the body, once again, I'm repeating, to say, I don't give a damn about the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, or nothing. All I want to do is fight or flight. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't, don't believe nothing I say. Go to your doctor. Go to anybody that's dealing with stress or endocrinologist and understand what is happening when you are stressed out and, and let them tell you. And let them tell you how the kingdom of God is at war. Because once your body and the cannibalistic hormone set in, I call it, I'm just going to call it what it is, a cannibalistic hormone. Once it's set in, it starts to, to attack the lip notes. And the lip note is your immune system. And once the lymph nodes is weakened, and this is when the Bible and Revelation say the, the, the army of God, the army of God in the kingdom of God, and that army can be defeated. Because once you weaken the army of God in his kingdom, your body, as the book of Revelation is telling you, then all stand a chance to be destroyed. And that once this starts to happen, the immune system, then you become susceptible to all kind of invasive diseases, all kind of bacteria. You take autoimmune disease. Once again, don't take my word for it. Autoimmune uh, deficiency diseases, 99.99.99% of them come after People have had stress under huge amount of stress because the adrenaline gland does not have what you would call a cutoff switch. It's not just going to stop producing cortisol. Your nervous system is not going to stop sending the signal to the higher place, to the heavenly body, your brain. It's not going to stop doing it until you and I find a way to let good defeat evil inside of us consciously. Because, see, when you, we talked about how to go now, to see then because your desires set in. 
your will to do good, your will to be spiritual, the will, your will to grow to a higher level of consciousness is ruled by your cardiovascular system. And this is why when you do something good, you say, oh, that touched my heart. That's why when you say something good about old Larry, that makes you feel good. Okay, okay, I'm taking a little bit too far. I mean, when you say something good about your little snot in those kids. But uh, in all seriousness, your, your heart is ruled, your, your will is ruled by the cardiovascular system. And this is why when you, when you meditate, you breathe better. Your heart, your lungs is taking in uh, uh, a proper balance of oxygen. And your heart is, 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 is happy to distribute it throughout your body. And this is why when you say you're in love, he touched my heart. My heart is heavy or my heart is good. In ancient Kemet, and they're talking about the judgment day, and all of this is still written on the wall in some of the temple. Well, that, you'll see the Egyptians uh, had the scale of justice, judgment. And on one side, you'll see a feather. And the other side, you see a heart. And these people have gotten you to talk about the judgment day coming, you're going to blow up the world. It had nothing to do with that. It had to do in order for you to reach a higher level inside of self, inside God's kingdom, and to meet face-to-face -face the God within you, your heart had to be lighter than that feather. And, and that's symbolic of emotional, spiritual, and the deeds that you have done. If you have done more kindness than you have unkindness, then your heart is lighter than that feather. And once your heart is lighter than that feather, then you can reach into the kingdom of God. You reach the kingdom of God, but that is a higher level of consciousness. But that's when you're living with your will. And this, and this is the white horse that they're talking about. And, and so we'll go through that a little bit. The white horse that's coming through the sky, all of that is symbolic of uh, the white horse means a higher level of consciousness. It has nothing to do with racism, white people, this right there. No, it has nothing to do with that. When the ancient Kemet wrote about the white horse coming in, out of, into heaven, it's, that's your mind. That's when you reach a higher level of consciousness and that the sword dripping with blood is that would cut away your madness. It'll cut away your foolishness. It would get rid of and separate you from doing silly stuff, destructive stuff. Because over here in another part of the book of Revelation, and it says to you, let's say, well, behold a pale horse. For death is his rider. And hell follow closely behind. So in one sense, you become a spiritual horse, uh, which is white and a higher level of consciousness, and then on the other hand, you can become the pale horse, which represent sickness, spiritual sickness. And death is riding you and I, and everywhere we go, we bring about hell. We're mistreating people. We're snapping at people. We don't help people. We, we uh, no longer becomes a us society. We become an I, I, me, me, mine society. You become the pale horse, and death is riding you. But you're living from your desires now, your desire to feel good, uh, to get rid of this stress. You, instead of getting rid of the stress and facing it, you want to make yourself feel good. You start eating yourself to death, and your stomach is not breaking down. With it don't have the proper enzymes to break all of this down, and it fights against you. You start to drink yourself to death. Behold a pale horse, because Armageddon is going off inside of you. Where all the nation within the nation of God's kingdom, your body, 
and all your internal organs is now at war with each other because you and I have not come to peace uh, with stress that is happening in our life bef before past, present, and the perceived stress of tomorrow. The Armageddon that we are talking about, that the book of Revelation is talking about, if you go to the mirror and you will see the kingdom that it exists in. And this is why when you are living from your desires that is locked into just unbelievable stress and pain and suffering that we as human beings are going through right now. And once again, there are ways that we can manage this. But if you are looking and keep praying that God drop bombs on the Middle East, that God kill all the Jews, that God kill all the Arabs, the Muslims, and if you believe that there's only 144,000 of you out of a million Christians, only 144,000 of you are going to be sucked up in the air. Oh, boy, that's another one. I don't know. You don't even have to have a sunroof. You don't have to have a convertible. You're going to be on the four or five. You're just going to be sucked up out of the car. As long as you continue to believe that, then you will not look inside of yourself and find that peace that you can let good win over evil that is within us as individual. And when you go back and you look at some of these, these writings of the ancients and what they were talking about, um, has been completely misrepresented. And many of you are going to go to your church Sunday, and still put money into the plates. And you are still listening to this preacher telling you about the end days that is coming because of Armageddon. Folks, we are at a critical time in history. And I, and I, and I tell you something about that. I had a girlfriend once. Yeah, I've had one girlfriend. I was, you know, I was a virgin most of my life. Okay, I'm kidding. Um, and I, at the time, I was working with Smokey Robinson. And she didn't know I was working with Smokey Robinson. So one day, we were at a restaurant. And Smokey and his wife and a couple of people walked in the restaurant. Smokey saw me. Before I saw him, he came over to the table. And he said, Larry, and he... I stood up, and he hugged me. He sit down there, and then he sit at the table with us for a while. And just, I'm like, I'm like, Smokey, you go over. You know, he was so nice. He's just a wonderful guy. And then when he left, my girlfriend said, well, you didn't tell me you was working with Smokey Robinson. I said, no. She said, well, why are you with me? Now, why am I telling you this story? She says to me, from that day on, every time we got an argument, she said, well, I know you're going to leave me. I said, what are you talking about? She said, well, you don't need me. You're working with Smokey Robinson and all these girls. I know you're going to leave me. Every time we got into an argument about anything, that was the first thing she said, I know you're going to leave me. I said, well, I got to the point that I got sick and tired of hearing her tell me I was going to leave her to I got to the point and I said, this is not going to work. I'm leaving you. What do you think the first thing she said was? I knew you were going to do it all the time. See, what I'm, the reason I tell this story, this is a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you continue to pray to God, you continue to pray to your preacher, have your preacher have you to go and elect officials that are believing in this biblical uh, interpretation. To, to, to put people in, in the Senate that believe in this, to put people in the White House that believe in this interpretation, then Armageddon can happen the way you're describing because it would be a self-fulfilling prophecy and you can't blame that on God. That's because you keep praying for it, 
you keep picking leaders that believes in it and forcing them to act accordingly. Now, I'm not passing a judgment on what happened in Israel in this uh, uh, talk today, one way or the other. I just know some of the right-wing preachers that stood up um, in Jerusalem and talked about how happy they were about the United States moving his embassy and how this is, and I know how they have preached that this is a part of the end days. I know that they, they have preached the destruction of the Jews. I know they have preached the destruction of the Muslims. And I know that they have preached about the, the end days so that the end days can bring about their savior. When all the time, all the time, it is about what's going on internally inside you and me. Most of the ancient spiritual writings, including the Old Testament and the New Testament and the Hindu and, and the Buddhism and all of this stuff, this was about consciousness, spirituality. Many of these stories was never intended to be taken literally. And folks, the, the, the battle of Armageddon is going on in each and every one of us right now. And the higher place and the higher spiritual place. And uh, when the Bible talks about, and all these ancient wisdom talk about the message coming from the east, anytime you're facing north, the right side of your brain is facing the east. And this is why you heard Jesus say, cast your net to the right side, to the east. Meaning, go to your higher level of consciousness. The right side of your brain represents the higher level of consciousness. Go there in that high place, and you can find peace within yourself, within the kingdom of God. And because once you become a healthy you, your lip notes, your immune system can become healthy. When you can shut down your adrenal gland from producing so much cortisol, when you can retrace that back to stop sending through your nervous system all these messages of anxiety, fight, and flight, when you stop living in that space, that you are in fight or flight 24 and 7. And, and I go through the same thing because I just, I, just, I just had a lot of dental work done. And I had no idea how much I grind my teeth. And now that I'm conscious of how much I grind my teeth, I can, being aware of it, it's the first start of me stopping it. It's the same thing about us you and I, when we are in these high levels of anxiety, living in a perpetual state of anxiety, and it's not about what happened today. It's what has accumulated over many, many years that got us to this stage where we want to take all of these. We need to take these drugs to keep us anxiety drugs. We have to keep these drugs down. When a lot of it is in us, it's in the food, is in meditation. And I know meditation, you you Christians, the first thing you go, well, what about prayer? Okay, prayer. What do you want to do? But you can get yourself out of this state. Because if we don't get ourselves out of this state of consciousness, our emotions, that fire that is raining down from the heaven, the highest point of our body, is going to continue to cause our pituitary gland to signal to our adrenaline gland, please produce more and more and more cortisol. And as long as you do that, you are poisoning yourself and your whole system is becoming cannibalistic. I got to check on the time right now. Uh, what I got about a minute? Okay, because I'm looking at this clock here. Um, 
So when when uh, I got a little bit thrown off, folks, I'm, I'm watching the clock here. I got I to make sure I you know, got to make sure I don't go over because I might go to hell. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You no, know, you know. So um, so a lot of what we are dealing with, and we often want to blame each other in our relationships, in our business, in our friends of what they are doing to us today what is causing us to be angry in the moment, what's causing us to snap now. When you get in that car and someone cut you off and you ride in your horns and you're throwing your finger out the window and, and oftentimes people are shooting and killing each other because they're blaming that person for cutting them off. But it really didn't have anything to do with the person that entered into your life at that moment in time. Stress is an accumulative thing. And as long as we don't acknowledge that we have accumulated this poison, this, this devil that we have allowed to enter into the kingdom of God. And then when you uh, allow yourself to recognize this, then the last um, gland that I'm going to talk about, you know, I talk about this a lot, then you can kick on the uh, penile gland because the nervous system is directly connected to the pituitary gland that communicate with the hypothalamus gland. But this is mainly direct. It's, I think it's the only gland that is connected directly to this mass universe of signals. So it kind of bypasses the, uh, the 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 gland that gives you your melanin, your melatonin to help you sleep. When you can touch and understand how this is working within your kingdom, and how the pineal gland can be turned on. You know, I don't have any answers to any of your problems. I'm not here to try and answer your problems. I'm not here to try to get you to follow me. I just want you to do your research. And then when you look at what I am saying and get your doctor to, to watch this, get your intracranial special, specialist to watch this show and let them tell you what I'm saying. Uh, about how this is connected with all of the glands in your body and the damage, the damage, the stress is doing. And because once you get beyond the denial, once you face up to the fact that you have been carrying this and I have been carrying this pain and this suffering most of my life, and especially if you're 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, you've been carrying this stress for many, many, many years. And the cortisol flooding your body has started to break it down. And this is why, oh boy, Larry, right now, I'm battling high blood pressure. Just call it like it is. I didn't realize how much stress I was under, but my body was at war. My body's at war. My heart is at war, which it call, could cause me to go into cardiac arrest in the kingdom of God, could cause me to have strokes in the kingdom of God because I haven't learned how to trigger the relaxing uh, hormone that comes from the, 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 the pituitary, I mean the um, pineal gland. And a lot of you, this is going to be kind of new to you because you haven't been taught this. You're still thinking that the book of Revelation is talking about some airplanes and shit. You're still thinking that some horse is going to come fly. Once again, I, uh, we got this horse going to be coming in and landing at JFK. Get your mind out of those fairy tales. And remember, Paul said, these things of Abraham and Sarah, is an allegory. 
And what religion came out of Abraham? Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. You can't get around that. So understand what he is saying and what the allegories mean. Understand what Jesus was saying when he said, I speak in parables. Uh, once again, folks, uh, this, this has been really, really an honor to pilot this airplane here. And uh, I hope this has been um, a pleasurable flight. And as we land, get ready for the landing at the end of this show, remember it's all a metaphor. And just get in and understand what the parable, the metaphors, and the allegories is. Look within yourself. Be honest with you. And then you can stop Armageddon from destroying the kingdom of God. You can stop the nations inside the kingdom of God from going to war with itself. Your lungs, your liver, your heart, your stomach. You can stop the war. You can stop the Armageddon by understanding who you are and who I am as an individual, not fixing the world, but fixing self. Remember, a nation can rise no higher than it elevates its woman. See you next week. <laughs>